I was assigned to the Google Brain team and I consist like worked with the Google Brain team as well, but I also ended up working with the robotics team within Google Brain. For the past year at Inside IIM, we have been conducting one-on-one -on -one career coaching sessions as counsel, short domain-specific courses as masterclasses, and university-affiliated certificate programs. Now, we are extremely excited to announce that we have a new home for all these highly rated programs in altuni.in. So, if you are looking to earn a high salary, get a promotion, switch jobs, click on the link in the description or just visit altuni.in. Thank you, enjoy the video and don't forget to press the bell icon to never miss an update. Cheers. The residency program, the applications kind of open up, at, I think around December or January. And it's a very flexible program. It's not designed for anybody particular. Like it's not specifically for people who are bachelors, masters, or even doctorates. It's, mm -hmm. um, it caters to a lot of people with a lot of different backgrounds. And the main aim of the program is to do machine learning research. But this is an extremely competitive program. So a lot of people from around the world apply for this. So I think this is closer to a full-time job at Google. Um, we are paid almost the same way as a full-time employee. Um, so, I mean, they don't give you residence, but I mean, they pay you enough to have your own residence and everything. Um, okay. So one of the perks that I really like is that since this is a research oriented program, so they actually let you travel to conferences, um, the leading conferences. Yeah. Um, so if you're submitting a paper and it gets accepted there, then everything's of course funded. But even if you're not accepted into the conference, then you can still travel and attend the conference and hear the hear about the leading research in the field. Yeah, you can do that once every year. Here I entered this 12 year, 12 month program, which you could extend for another year. Uh, mm -hmm. But these these are sort of dynamic changes. So I know for the next year it was an 18 month program, which you could also extend for a bit. So the reasoning for this was that since this is a research oriented program. Um, people often felt that 12 months was not sufficient to actually make a credible research yeah. contribution or like it takes time to like settle in and find the right project and then like work on it. So um, that is why they extended the program and they also have the option to extend within the program. So I remember applying for this program around January in 2018, I think. And um, yeah, so the first round is basically you have a CV submission and then I think they also get a letter of recommendation from one of your advisors or people you have worked with. So again, like this is a research oriented program, so it's probably better to get into, uh, get it from a research uh, advisor as well. So in technically this program is caters to undergraduates as well. So people who may not have extensive machine learning research experience, for example, but they do prefer people uh, like, I mean, that's technical requirement, but I mean, in the end, it's really competitive. So they do end up preferring students who have some background machine learning research experience. So from my own application, I cannot, of course, like be 100% sure I wasn't on the committee that was hiring me. Uh, but having said that, I do think like two things which were important were first, um, I think I, uh, my GPA played a pretty good role. So I've taken a lot of coursework in machine learning research as well. There's a first round which goes into comparative programming or like just basic algorithmic programming, which has nothing to do with machine learning. It's essentially to test out your programming skills and that you can program at a level of um, the co company. Uh, so I think this is fairly standard. This is nothing. Um, different from other software engineering yeah. interviews. Uh, they're not going to ask you to code in a specific language. It's mostly about pseudocode and you have to walk them through to what, about what you're thinking, what the right solution is, and you can talk with them. It's a 45 minute interview. And after that, um, they actually invite you on site. Uh, yeah, once you've cleared that and once everything has passed through, uh, they invite uh -huh. you on site for a couple more interviews. The interviews were 
not your average software engineering interviews these were focused on machine learning itself and um and this again varies a lot for different people i can only uh, tell you my own experience so uh, the first round of the interviews were um machine learning questions but they weren't like typical questions that you would encounter on websites or anything like that they were actually testing the fundamentals so mm-hmm. i remember like my interview was also like the, in some ways like asking me questions which were about these nuanced details about algorithms and stuff and they like he was also like trying to guide me to the solution as well but it's a really interesting interview i would say the second interview for me was about the research and the projects that done at the time so and the other interviewer went into deep details about my projects itself so you really should know what you have done and like the details but you also need to be able to tell very concisely what your project is about because it's a short interview you cannot go into hours and hours about what your project is so mm-hmm. you actually need to know your projects concisely and then they ask you questions based on that and then they try to understand uh, actually that's it for campus placements Mm-hmm. um but honestly i was not very intent on it like you actually do not know any of the results at the time so it's advisable to sit for the campus placements um but my main target was like either to go for a masters or phd program or like for one of these residencies uh i think it was slightly different than the campus interviews for sure um so specifically i think the first round which i described um for the technical programming part was fairly similar to what you would experience in the campus interviews but the other two rounds were not similar to like any of the interviews i gave on campus how you would go preparing about it i think first uh step would be to actually do your machine learning fundamental courses uh that that's what worked for me uh mm-hmm. it's 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 not necessarily about being able to program uh okay. the machine learning algorithm or knowing your libraries uh like mm-hmm. tensorflow or pytorch or any of those stuff but it's actually about knowing what goes on behind those algorithms and understanding those details so that's of course one thing and since they talked about my research as well so like i mean the projects you choose to do um are mm-hmm. also fairly important so in my case for example i had some experience with deep learning research um especially what I did in Montreal and then I had some like um familiarity with optimization algorithms for example uh so they really dug deep into the details of those projects but yeah I would also suggest like doing the right projects in some sense like choosing the right topics topics which might be relevant or which they consider relevant for example deep learning research is a great topic to research and it's really hot right now and then actually spending time like understanding what's going on what problems you face for example and what solutions you come up with so i think those things are really important especially like um it's really flexible so i was assigned to the google brain team and i consist like worked with the google brain team as well but i also ended up working with the robotics team within google brain it's really flexible uh about the structure of the program so the way it works is you come in and there is a one month orientation effectively where you are familiarized with uh the tools you'll be using there's no coursework or any such stuff uh but you're definitely like given some time to get yourself familiar because google has a lot of internal tools for infrastructure and how you write code and how you run jobs so you kind of have to familiarize or familiarize yourself with those details um and how you do that is you actually choose a mini project so um the aim is to like replicate a paper or a research paper that already exists so you go into the details of the paper and try to write the record and like reproduce the results and the aim is to like familiarize yourself and during that one month different researchers in the team also like tell you about the projects they are working on and then you can talk to them and like find your interest what do you want to work on can reach out to anybody get a coffee with anybody and then just like talk about the project so when i first came to the air evidence i was really interested in reinforcement learning which is a specific problem within machine learning um it has a lot of applications itself but one of the prominent applications of reinforcement learning is robotics so i worked in this specific um, a problem called like unsupervised reinforcement learning um 
and I mean, I've worked on multiple projects, but this is probably one of the highlights of my research at Google Brain. Um, so essentially the idea is that when you're trying to teach robots to do things, um, for example, you're trying to teach your robot to walk forward or walk mm-hmm. backward. There is a very tedious engineering process that goes behind it where you have to construct some reward functions, um, mm-hmm. which kind of tell you, oh, this action is good. So reinforcement learning is all about like uh, taking some actions and then trying to decide which actions were good or which actions were not. And designing the reward function and implementing them on robots is really hard. Uh, so a really interesting subfield within this is that you try to teach robots without any explicit rewards and mm-hmm. uh, it kind of dives into these ideas about oh what am i curious about what do i want to know about the rest of the world or um uh, like oh can i predict what will happen if i do this so mm-hmm. if you if it's so the ideas in unsupervised learning can be like you can apply these ideas and then like design some reward functions and like the end product of my research was that we could teach a robot how to walk in different directions it can reach any goal but it was never like designed by humans so uh, yeah so we left a robot to like um, yeah for a few hours and then like it would walk around my personal goal is not to convert into a full like a job at google brain but Uh, you're definitely more eligible than other people because you're familiar with the people inside you're familiar with the infrastructure inside you've already like delivered some results probably so they're definitely uh, but having said that it's not a guarantee like you still have to like interview and work really hard to get into like but it definitely makes it easier so for me the crisis affected me because i i'm supposed to transition to a phd program in stanford so i did want to get a f1 visa uh at some point but unfortunately like the embassies are closed and indebted to covid-19 and uh i cannot get a visa at this point so i had to like defer my stanford offer um by a quarter so i will try and join uh in january um otherwise for the specific program no uh i was already in the us and Uh, my program doesn't get invalid or anything i'm on a j1 visa for the personal experience it was mostly research experience uh, but i wouldn't say that's necessarily like what like you can still apply and get in if you have done company internships as well i mean it makes it easier because if you've done more research then there's more to talk about and then they can like get more excited by your application but um it's not necessary Uh, for my internships though like my research even in undergraduate and my internships were focused on machine learning research so i definitely think it's a great opportunity like to be in a residency program uh yeah. it looks good on your resume even when you're like done and obviously it's a competitive program you've worked with like great people and done like amazing stuff so yeah. it's definitely a boost it, no way it's like a downside i would say uh but having said that like um i think it really depends upon what you want to do um if you do want to transition yeah. to the us for example uh and get a job here it might make it slightly easier i mean but there'll always be issues with visas for example uh so like i mean just be prepared for that um yeah i mean overall i would say like it depends upon what work you're getting and like what you're comparing to as well um The harder choice I would say is between like uh if you want to go for a masters right after or like doing this residency program and that's where like a lot of other logistical issues I think come in.